Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, when it comes to finding objects in the night sky, one thing that can really help us or aid us is our hands. Now, this is especially helpful for things like the planets that were above the horizon or distances of stars, because they're often, often referred to as degrees. And if there's one fancy word, or if you can call it a fancy word, or any jargon that um, crops up, when you're learning astronomy, uh, degrees often uh, crops up. Um, like I say, that's usually uh, the distance between stars or you can say like, you know, you want to view a certain object when it's a certain amount of degrees above the horizon. And we can use our hands to measure these degrees. So let me show you how you measure degrees with your hands, okay? Now, one finger, okay, represents roughly one degrees. Now that's the distance from here to here. Now you can use your first finger, some people like to use the pinky, okay? And that will measure one degrees. Now the way you would do it is, when you're doing any uh, kind of measurement like this with your hands, you would hold your hand at arm's length, okay? Close one eye usually, it helps to close one eye and sight it that way. So if there were stars, you know, pretty close together and you held your finger up and they were between this distance, that would be one de degree apart, basically. Okay, so now if you hold three fingers up, okay, now this is gonna be five degrees, all right? Uh, now hold a fist up, all right? So if you hold a fist up in there like that, that would be 10 degrees, okay? There's the distance from there to there, all right? Three degrees, distance from there, to there, okay. Uh, then we've got the uh, rock or metal sign, my favorite, <laughs> okay, which is your uh, first finger pointed and your pinky up, okay. Now between here and here is 15 degrees, okay. Now the final one is this one, okay. It feels a little bit awkward to do, but you stick your pinky out and your thumb. Okay, now this is the big one. This is the 25 degrees. Okay, now even though this may not appear uh, quite a long distance, uh, 25 degrees is quite, um, it's, it's quite a stretch in the sky. And to give you an idea of uh, how big these degrees do actually look on the night sky, if you go out, on the, you can do this in the daytime as well, just as a, a little experiment, and look out your window, and it's best if you've got a, like some trees or houses for a bit of perspective. And then just do um, the uh, 25 degree one, okay? And just close one eye and just look how much sky that covers. And you'll be, you'll be surprised just how much sky 25 degrees does actually cover. Now, a good thing to practice, and it's a little bit of an extension to the hobby as well, you know, something different to do, is to Get, go out one, uh, one nice clear night and measure different constellations doing this method, okay? Now, for instance, let's look at the Summer Triangle. Uh, now, if you don't know what the Summer Triangle is, it's in the east at the minute. Um, I did a video on the Summer Triangle, actually. I'll leave a link to that one in the description with some interesting things you can find in amongst it. Uh, but let's just take, for instance, the Summer Triangle. Um, we've got Vega, <coughs> excuse me, we've got Vega, We've got Deneb and we've got Altair, okay? Now the distance between uh, Vega and Deneb, for instance, is a roughly around about 20, well, it is about 25 degrees, okay? Now that's roughly this one, okay? Um, if you do a good stretch, it does a good, a good stretch, you can just push about 25 degrees out. Um, for instance, the distance between um, Altair and Deneb, Okay, would is 36 degrees, no, it's 38 degrees. Yes, 38 degrees from uh, Altair to Deneb. Now, the reason I'm telling you all this is it's a good thing to learn these sort of sizes and measuring constellations and make a note of it, okay? Um, 
like write down uh, Hercules, okay, and just write down the dimensions of what the, the like the main square of Hercules is, okay. Do what I've done with the summer triangle, go around measuring it, okay, and just jot down. Now, when I say jot it all down. Um, you want to do simple drawings of your fingers, okay? Now, if you can't draw, don't worry about it, okay? Um, you can do what I do, and that is to do really simple drawings, okay? Um, for instance, I mean, just go out, take a notepad like this with you, okay? And sketch this constellation out if you like, all right? It doesn't have to be too accurate, because what's more important is the measurements, okay? Go around and measure it. All right, and don't worry about remembering what the degrees are. Just remember this system of, you know, one, three, and then you've got the metal sign, okay? Oh, sorry, we've missed the fist out. Fist before the metal sign, and then the final one, okay? So they're the three to remember. And don't mess about drawing hands if you can't, okay? Because in the dark, you know, this is just, a, you can do something a lot better when you get indoors light. What I do is what I call a potato hand is obviously a bit smaller than this. I just draw like an oval like that. I hope the camera's picking that up. And then um, I always put my thumb down here, okay, if it's a thumb, and my pinky here, okay? Another way, another than that, each, each one, if it's just like, uh, you know, I'd just put a line on like that. As you can see, that'd be one finger. This would be three fingers. Um, so it's, it's very, very basic, but if you get, if you get what I mean, I mean, if we, if we cross those out, we did, uh, the, uh, the, the big one, the 25 degree, we'd have my thumb down here and I'd have my pinky up here, see, like that. And I kind of know that shape is the 25 degree. Now, the reason I'm, like I say, the reason why I'm saying this is once you've got a reference, to sizes of different constellations. I'm not saying just do it with uh, the summer triangle. Do it with just as many constellations if you can. So you've got a good like little reference chart. Then when you've got other star charts and you see uh, something you may be interested in, so you've got a better idea and you're not going into it blind, you can say, well, those two stars and compare it to a constellation, even if it's a constellation, you don't know if, if this deep sky object is nearby a, a certain constellation, okay? You've got a reference to how far stars are, okay? So say if it's, I don't know, it's you've got one that's three degrees, okay? You know it's, uh, sorry, it's I'm three, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of that. Uh, you've got one that's five degrees from a certain st bright star that you know, Okay, or something like that, just as an example. What you can then do is, even in, the, in this constellation that you don't know anything about, you don't know because you haven't measured this one, but you can see that just by putting your finger and thumb on the paper or the app that you're using or whatever, you can measure and say, oh, right, well, I know that these two stars are, are you know, 10 degrees, 5 degrees, and they're roughly... 10, 5 degrees, and this little deep sky object that I want to look at, so that's roughly going at 10 degrees, if you get what I'm saying. I hope I'm making that clear, um, because it really does help, having that reference of knowing how far, because they're never going to change those, the, the, the stars are always going to stay that far apart, so you can just take that reference of your little potato hands or whatever, and, uh, and compare it to star charts to get a rough idea. Another thing you can do, um, just to prime yourself before it goes dark, is now you know this method of measuring and how it's gonna look in the sky. Once you learn how, how many degrees the constellation is, you can get a rough idea of how big it's going to be in the sky. Because trust me, when you're first learning the constellations, you can think, oh, they look a lot smaller. Some of them look a lot smaller on a chart than they do in the, um, in the actual sky, okay? For instance, uh, the square of Pegasus on, on, on a star chart, you know, it, it looks tiny. But trust me, it's, it's a huge, great square. And what you can do, uh, because you know this, is go out in the daytime, okay, and do the measuring. 
All right, find out what it is off a star chart and do the measuring and say, right, it's going to be raising, uh, raising. It's going to be rising up uh, there in the east or whatever. Uh, so you can put your hand up, do your measuring and think, all oh, right, that's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. And when you're first learning, having this little bit of knowledge from, uh, uh, you know, uh, measuring it and, and just doing a little bit of study can really help and, and just boost the learning process. Now, going back to actually measuring degrees uh, with your hands, uh, there's another uh, a way of doing it, which I like to call the crooked finger method. And that is if you hold your finger like this, okay, in a, in a slight arc, well, you've got degree measurements right there on your finger. Uh, as you can see, your finger's made up of three joints. You've got one, two, and then three joints here, okay? Now, your first one, this is going to be uh, three degrees, okay? From there to there. From here to here, you've got four degrees, and from here to here, you've got six degrees. So there's another little convenient way you can uh, measure degrees in the sky. Now, another uh, good little method you can do with your hands, instead of measuring uh, degrees, you can actually measure hours. And this is especially useful for if you're out in the field and the sun's uh, nearly setting and you want to know uh, roughly how long it's going to be before it goes dark. Okay, now what you would do here is you hold your hand with your four fingers like this, outstretched, put your pinky on the horizon line okay or whatever the horizon line is and look where the sun is now when the sun gets to uh, your first finger there's roughly an hour left okay when it gets to your middle finger here uh, you've got about 45 minutes of daylight left when it gets down to your ring finger we're down to half an hour or 30 minutes and finally your pinky there's just 15 minutes of daylight left don't forget, go out and measure a few constellations and jot them down and uh, just, just, just so you've got a reference and it's, it is, really does. I mean, I still use it to this day, um, you know, just so I, I, I've got an idea of how far certain targets away from a certain other object. It doesn't have to be a constellation, it can be just a star, a bright star, you know, uh, that is 15 degrees south from uh, that particular star, okay? Which uh, may have sounded a little bit complicated before I did this video to you. If you didn't know what 15 degrees south is, now you know exactly what it is. <laughs> well, that's about it for another video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed, maybe uh, think about subscribing and hit that bell button, the uh, notifications button, because I do do regular uploads and you don't want to miss that next video. It might be just that one you've been looking for. In the meantime, go and do some measuring in the sky and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.